Bye. Hello and welcome to the Global DIY Network and to this my first interview, my fifth interview uh, in, in the series Meet the CEOs with the leading home improvement CEOs from around the world. My name is John Herbert and I am the General Secretary of EDRA, the European DIY Retail Association and of GIN, the Global Home Improvement Network. These two associations have altogether 215 members from around the world operating in 74 countries with over 32,000 stores and member sales in excess of 320 billion. I would like to welcome today all our members from all over the world, wherever you may be, and also the members of our partner association, the HEMA, the Home Improvement Manufacturers Association, who also have global members and also to the sponsors and the delegates who have registered for the Global DIY Summit to be held in Copenhagen later this year. It is a great pleasure and an honor today to have as my interview partner, Mr. Carl Otto Lerbenskold. Mr. Mr. Lerbenskold is the owner and the chairman of Maxpo, which is a, a leading chain of home improvement stores in Norway. So may I first of all welcome Carl Otto Lerbenskold. Hello, Carl Otto. Well, Thank you. Thank you so much, John. All, yeah, well, it's a pleasure you're there. And I must say that having read about your history, I see you're the 13th generation of your company, which was founded, I think, was been going since 1649. That is a remarkable achievement. And I know you it is a very well-known family. Your great-great-grandfather was the Prime Minister of Norway. So your company is steeped in tradition. So if you would tell us a little bit first about this remarkable history. Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, John, for inviting me. And uh, it's a pleasure to see you again. These days, it's not too often that we had the opportunity to meet. And it is also a great pleasure for me to also to meet uh, all the good co colleagues from all over the world. And uh, as you said in the introduction, I'm a very fortunate uh, uh, man, not young anymore. Uh, I used to be that when we met the first time. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> I'm the owner of a Lerberschall Wecker, which is a very old uh, family owned company in, in Norway. Uh, it was based in 1649 when my ancestors uh, bought uh, properties, forest properties around Oslo. And uh, later that developed into uh, f uh, not forestry, but also sawmilling industry, ironworks, uh, both dependent on, uh, on timber as a raw material and, uh, and was the main activity for a, for a, for many uh, many many years and uh, as a company we have been able we have survived many difficult economical times and political uh, critical situations and and wars and, and I'm sure that, that many times during the history it has been a close bet uh, but uh, my ancestors has managed to 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 stay alive and continuously develop the, the company. And uh, if we go back, the properties that was bought in 1649, they are still with a family. And uh, uh, as you said, I'm the 30th generation uh, having the, the pleasure of, of, of managing these uh, wonderful uh, properties and, and also the companies. and. Uh, my big ambition in life is, of course, not to be the last, and the 13th is, uh, <laughs> has to be a good number uh, this time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, maybe characterize our family is that uh, the ownership has always been fairly limited and uh, uh, gone from one generation to uh, the next generation without being uh, diluted the ownership. So there's always been one owner of the of the company and the, and the land estate, and that uh, uh, 
is the is the main reason that we have managed to to survive so many generations. And uh, and my ancestors has uh, probably had a strong entrepreneurial uh, uh, gene, and and um, they have always been very active. Uh, uh, looking for new businesses, trying to develop the company continuously. And, uh, and today, Lovenshall Vecra, we have uh, several activities. The DIY and building materials is the, by far the, the biggest operational activity. And uh, the DIY and, and chain uh, Maxpo. Uh, we are also in real estate, uh, uh, recreational, uh, residential and uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, industrial uh, commercial real estate. We are in forestry and agriculture still, uh, also very closely related to the timber industry with sawmilling uh, production. We are part owner in the, in the second biggest company in Norway. And we have a portfolio of smaller company. Uh, uh, it is a little bit easier to start than sell. And uh, what is characterized uh, that we also have a very long term perspective. Uh, can you see me now, John? Hello? John? Hello? John? Yes, I'm back again. Sorry, something went wrong here. That's yes. I was rang in the cathedral and I lost you, but I, I got you. So, yeah. Okay, I, there you are. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I thought it was some technical problems that you're facing. It um, was a technical problem, indeed. Oh, okay, very good. We yeah. saw that. And, uh, and uh, so we have a variety of, of companies in the, in, in the group. And uh, Maxpo, uh, the building material and DIY chain, that was uh, developed uh, from coming from the timber industry and also from the ironworks, producing building materials. And we developed into a wholesale uh, uh, of uh, hardware, paint, and uh, but decided that we wanted to build a, a strong brand uh, close to the consumer and also the professional builder. And today, Maxpo has a leading position in Norway. We are not the biggest, uh, but we have ambition to be the, be the best. And we serve both the, the consumer and the, the professional builder. Uh, we have uh, 65 stores in Norway, all over uh, uh, Norway, and very in size. The smallest are 600 square meters and the biggest are up to 20,000 square meters. We have a very integrated system with a central warehouse that distributes to all the stores. Uh, uh, so uh, to control the logistics is uh, uh, very important for us. Wow. We, we want to, to be uh, perceived as a high quality uh, yeah, sure. provider. Uh, with a high service and very skilled employees. Today we are about 1,600 employees in the company uh, and with the total sales of uh, approximately 550 million euro. Ah, so very similar to the company I was the CEO of in Germany, of course, which we also had as, uh, this, almost the same amount of employees and a family business, of course. Mm. Um, so when was it founded? When did you start the, the DIY chain? What year? Well, it, it was launched in 1995. So it's oh. about 25 years ago since. Uh, 25 years ago. Yes. Uh, yeah. and before that, we have been active in, uh, with, with, with smaller stores. Uh, but then we decided to, to develop uh, yeah. uh, a strong position in the, in the, in the DIY market. But your concept proves it's a high-end, uh, service-orientated, very class place in the in the in the marketplace for such a store. I think it's proved over and over again. It's just not the the huge big companies that can be very successful. And I think these hidden champions like uh, your company 
Uh, I think they're often underestimated generally because they don't read a lot or see a lot about them, but they, they really do provide a very, very important service everywhere. Well, we try to be, uh, even if you are not the biggest, uh, we try to, to be, uh, be successful in the market. And, uh, and uh, uh, in the domestic market in Norway, we have uh, all the international uh, competitors. We have Saint-Gobain, we have Bauhaus, uh, uh, Big Mac from Sweden, uh, Kesko are here. So really? we are so... continuously facing uh, uh, a strong competition from, uh, from the, the major European uh, players. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, a major, major competitors, of course. But Norway, of course, is the richest country in the world per capita. Uh, it's amazing. It's more than 50% higher than it is in, in Germany. So it is a very rich company, is Norway, isn't it? Yes, we have been very fortunate uh, since uh, we uh, in the 60s discovered oil in the North Sea that gave uh, Norway the unique opportunity to, to develop a, a strong economy uh, mm. and over time it's uh, of course been very oil dependent uh, but over time also managed to to develop a, a variety of, of industries uh, so being less dependent on oil in the future and and uh, we are not that many people five million people in Norway and um, and uh, all the governments that has been during this time has been very uh, clear uh, following uh, the strategy that uh, all the surplus uh, gain from the from the uh, oil sector is invested abroad. So I think Norway also is now very fortunate. So we have the biggest sovereign wealth fund in the world uh, mm -hmm. uh, with everything invested abroad. And that is sort of the, the pension for the future. Yeah, well, it's certainly a very nice position for the country to be in. And uh, of course, the whole world is now is suffering from this awful pandemic. Um, I looked at the, the situation in Norway and the deaths of, of, of people, and it's remarkably low. I think you've only had 550 deaths with a population of 5.38 million people. Uh, so if you, this was the UK in comparison, you would have about 7,000 deaths if, if you had the same population as the UK. And the UK have now have over 100,000. This is a remarkable achievement. How have you managed to keep the, 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 the infection rate so low and the death rate so low in, uh, in Norway? Well, I think uh, I'm not a specialist in this, uh, but uh, first of all, I think we can say that we have had the, 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 the government uh, with the prime minister in lead uh, has been uh, very good in, in how they have uh, managed the situation. Uh, we're very early and taking the necessary uh, actions to prevent uh, the spread of the, the, the pandemic and, uh, uh, and combine that a bit by avoiding to close down the country as uh, we have seen in many, many European uh, uh, countries that have been suffering quite a lot more. We are also mm -hmm. fortunate that we are few people and we, if the way people live uh, uh, are, uh, and, uh, and the conditions of, of, of how we are, the, the housing is uh, structured makes it easier also to, to avoid that people uh, are too much close to each other. Mm. But in general, I would say that uh, by taking the, the right decisions at the right time, uh, they managed to, to make it uh, a, a very successful story. And if you compare to Sweden or neighbor country, they are the, uh, the population is twice as Norway, they are 10 million, but I think they are close to 10,000 10, people now have died. 10,000 deaths, yeah. Yeah, yeah so they, well, they decided to do it another way. Uh, so really being very liberal, they have 10 times as many deaths, so it's a, a terrible situation. From your 65 stores, have they always been open, or uh, what is the situation now? Yes, uh, yeah, we have also been very lucky that we were, uh, we were not... Uh, uh, 
instructed by the government to, to close. So we managed to keep all our stores open and also our logistics centers. And, uh, and that has been in, uh, operating very well during the pandemic situation. And, uh, but of course it has been a very challenging year because we have to adapt to all the, the, uh, the safety measures that we have course, to take yeah. to, to protect both or employees and also the all or uh, customers that visit us uh, on a daily basis. Mm. Have have the other stores closed in Norway? The other the fashion stores and the restaurants have they been closed as well? Uh, what we happen is that uh, late last fall, uh, the, the restaurants had to close. Not because they were closed, but they were not allowed to sell alcohol anymore, and uh, mm. that uh, made it difficult. And uh, what happened last a few days ago on Saturday, we had the first time the, the government decided that in the greater Oslo area, all stores should close and also all restaurants uh, are closed because the, it was detected that we got the UK, the English uh, mutant of the uh, virus and they wanted to be very quick and, and stop. But fortunately we were able to keep Keep the all stores open, not to the public, but we can serve all the professional customers. So this is the first time that has happened in a in the year since March last year, mm -hmm. and hopefully so, this will be a very very short time. Mm -hmm. So how has the business been operating in the last year during the pandemic? Have you had higher sales than uh, everywhere in Europe where the stores have been open? They've been mainly open because they've been seen as essential retailing. The businesses have done very, very well. Is this the same in Norway? Yes, we, are, we have been very, very fortunate. And I can, uh, I remember the days in the mid-March uh, when the pandemic uh, situation broke up. out. Uh, we were all very, very scared and prepared that we would uh, lose sales and, and uh, the economy would be very, very difficult. And... Uh, but fortunately, the situation has been quite uh, the, the opposite. I have never in my career uh, um, seen any sales figures of growth uh, that we have seen in th this year. Uh, the, the consumer side of the, uh, of the DIY market has had a, on a nation base, uh, growth of more than 25 to 26 percent uh, and yeah. that follows a fairly slow first quarter last year mm -hmm. but also the professional sector uh, that has not been affected by the by the pandemic situation at the growth of uh, close to eight percent so it has mm -hmm. been a, in a, a fantastic year in this respect and uh, People uh, have been able to, they have had to stay at home and uh, decided to invest in improving their homes and gardens and, and do what I probably have been thinking of for a long time. The general feeling is that people have really discovered their homes in this pandemic again because they've been forced to stay at home. Uh, would you agree with that, that people are investing more in their homes because they they can't spend so much money on clothing or other things that uh, they're now investing in the home. Is that is that happening there? You think? Yes, absolutely. And I think that people have discovered that uh, they have a nice home and they can also make it nicer. And and hopefully that what we have seen now is a part of it probably will be a permanent situation where we will see that uh, the, the the shift in lifestyle people probably will travel less. And, yeah. and 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 uh, and continue to to spend uh, money to improve their 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 home. So going forward, so how would you? How would, I mean, you're you're a private company anyway, so probably you can speak a little easier. How do you see this year developing from today's point of view? compared to last year in their sales. Do you think um, the general feeling is that this, uh, that this pandemic is going to go on for a little while, that people have discovered the homes and that people are generally optimistic about this year? Is that the case with you? Yes, I would say so. We are, it's 
this year is very, very difficult to predict about the future. Where will we be uh, half a year from, from now? But in general, I think the, the, the economies are, are good. Uh, and uh, people are uh, optimistic. And uh, I, I believe that they will also have a, have a good year in, the, in this sector uh, in 2021. And do you see it continuing, or do you see then the, you know, we one day go, we're going to get the, the the bills for all the what we've been spending and everything. Do you see this continuing, or do you? How do you see the future? I, I know you were the, you, as I say, you were the president of the Norwegian Enterprises for Services and Trade. You've got a very good overview of the Norwegian market. How would you? How would you think it would from today's point of view? I know it's just a guesstimate, but how do you think the future looks? Uh, uh I believe it's prosperous, uh, and, uh, and uh, all the indicators, uh, uh, both from for the Norwegian economy and also the European and global economy, that, that we will see a growth again this year in uh, in both in uh, private spending and public spending, and uh, and um, and uh, we will also experience a, a, a growth, not the same figures again. Uh, uh, as we have seen last year, I don't think that is possible, and we'll probably never ever see that again. Uh, but if it uh, levels off and also with a small growth from this area, we can be be very happy that it will be a, an active market for all of us. So, really, for the future, then, uh, what Norway concerns you're very optimistic about the future that. When the pandemic comes, when people have got their their injection, their their vaccines and everything comes back to relatively normal, you expect to be a quite a boom in the economy. Or you know? yes, ab absolutely, and and and, uh, and also hopefully we'll see again that all these industries around us that have been suffering, also the the, the, the travel and leisure industry and people working in in these sectors, that 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 they will have the opportunity to. To capture and, and take mm -hmm. advantage of a, an opening of an, a, a normalization of the economy because there are uh, some sectors of the economy that are, that are suffering very very hard indeed uh, what about your stores have they been open the normal time has it just been normal during this pandemic or have you had shorter hours or, or any, any change there in their trading hours really no, in, in India, no, we have been able to keep the stores open at, at normal times. And also mm. one of the big, uh, big uh, uh, issues and, and uh, challenges is that with the strong growth in the, uh, in the sales, it's been a very busy year for everyone uh, working in the stores. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very happy that we had uh, loyal employees that have been able to handle this uh, because mm -hmm. it's been extraordinarily hard uh, uh, with more work at the same time also we have been uh, forced to take uh, a lot of precautions to to mm -hmm. take to ensure that our customers have been uh, been safe when they so, visit them. Mm, uh, so you've had uh, you, you have obviously social distancing disinfectant uh, regulating the people coming in the store the same as everybody else have you had people employees who didn't want to come to work because of the danger of infecting probably their parents or have you had that problem at all no i have uh, never never heard any uh, uh, incidents of that and i am um, I believe that both all of our employees and uh, and customers have felt that they have been safe, and we have mm. uh, done absolutely whatever we could uh, to mobilize and, and uh, uh, teach and develop and give all the necessary uh, uh, technical precautions to to ensure that the separation in the stores. The only thing that has probably been the most difficult is that uh, uh, since uh, March, uh, most of our employees in working in offices have been at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a very difficult uh, working situation. And I really hope that all of us will be able to meet again 
in the offices and have the good discussions in the corridors and and uh, and also have the social dimension of, of work. Uh, and that mm -hmm. uh, that is worrisome after so many months of uh, of um, where we all have to work from from home. So once life becomes normal again. Do you expect people to come back to the offices every day or is this this home office, people getting used to it, that probably in two or three years time, people may work three days in the, in the offices and two days at home, or do you see them going back to normal as it was before? Well, if you talk to people now, I think all of them miss their work and they miss their, yeah. their colleagues, uh, most of all, which is a very important, but I'm sure that uh, in, in the future, we will see uh, most likely a, a more flexible uh, uh, organization of the, of the work with uh, part of the, the work is done from home when that can be done. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think we are social people and we want to, we want to uh, associate with your colleagues and, and uh, we will be back in office. That is my belief. Yeah, indeed. I, I think we've all had enough. Zoom is okay and seeing people on screens, but I really miss the physical contact. I've missed, I travel 35 times a year and I've not traveled anywhere. I invite people, we have meetings, and now all we do is see people on television screens. And yes. But you, you don't get the same sort of vibes and everything. No, and, so, a, and a good, good ideas come when people talk to each other. Indeed, uh, indeed. We have to meet our. Uh, or uh, colleagues, but also meet our uh, suppliers, and we have to meet our uh, mm. uh, our customers also in a different way, and uh, yeah. and that has to be personal. But I think our members have been exemplary the way they've been sharing their experiences and telling people we got all the safety measures out very early. We we get the feedback. We heard about uh, drive and collect rather than click and collect and what it means. And, uh, and, and I think that we've responded. The industry itself has responded very well to this pandemic. Uh, so what have you learned from this pandemic, uh, Carlotto? Well, first of all, uh, uh, we have learned that uh, uh, when it started, how important it is to have uh, have uh, good contingency plans, uh, uh, prepare the organization to handle situations that are uh, not uh, not normal, and uh, and the management that are able to to handle it and. I think that is one of the, the great uh, learning experiences we have, and also how important it is to uh, be able to uh, improvise, take decisions quickly, uh, and also uh, in organizations that are uh, well distributed uh, geographically to uh, uh, do everything you can to keep the information flow to your employees on a very high level and, uh, and uh, to avoid any kind of speculations and uh, fear for the situation. And also it's important also to, to ensure for, for everyone that uh, uh, they should not worry about the future. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so many uh, aspects of life were in, uh, were in, in change. And we wanted also our employees to, to know that uh, uh, we wanted to, we have a long-term perspective and we also wanted to, knew that we, we, we would be able to go through these hard times uh, in a good way, but also as a, as a strong collective team and, and a team effort. Yeah, indeed. A year ago, we first heard really about the pandemic. It was only just about a year ago when the first death occurred in, in Germany uh, and all that's happened. It's been, it's been quite, a, uh, a, a quite, quite a year. Um, I think the thing I've learned about it is that you get your haircut when you can't. We can't, I, can't I can't even get a haircut. I haven't had a haircut for three, three months now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, uh, nothing in sight at the moment because everything is in lockdown. We live in Germany here and they reckon the lockdown is going to go till the middle of February, maybe extended. Uh, somebody even said to Easter, I hope not. And unfortunately, although we're essential retail considered to be by the, uh, uh, in Europe, 
uh, the German stores are closed at this moment of time. So it, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's been very, very difficult. So, um, but what has benefited in this, uh, you know, within the pandemic about the online sales? Everybody's talking about the boom in online. Uh, and of course, people like Amazon have profited, but also the home improvement stores, whether in America with Home Depot or Lowe's or in Europe with, uh, with Hornback, Bauhaus, B&Q, they've all seen a great boom in online sales and also in click and collect. Also, of course, through the computer. Has that been the case with Maxpo? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and we have uh, no read uh, or, or uh, internet sales has uh, never been very uh, big in the DIY uh, industry in Norway. I don't think in in the rest of rest of Europe. But uh, we have been uh, working quite hard during the last years to develop. Uh, uh, a good system to to be able to 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 be a, a good distributor uh, through the uh, internet uh, e-commerce, and what we've seen is it was a it has maybe close to double or close to three three doubled uh, during the the last uh, six months, and uh, uh, now we are getting close to ten uh, percent of. Uh, the sales are uh, are e-commerce, and that has uh, been a tremendous growth during the last uh, last six months or nine months. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that we will that will be a permanent situation. We will um, see that the the consumer in the future also will use the e-commerce as a as a, the one of the channels that they select to. Uh, to be a customer of Maxpo. I mean, as the younger generation come through, there are more and more online sales, but 10% for a company, if I may say so, like Maxpo is very, very high. And uh, I also agree it will increase as it goes on. Do you see any danger? I mean, the people are forecasting sales on online in five, 10 years could be 30, 40% of sales. Do you see any any, do you see any changes in your physical stores or uh, will you expand? Will you have more physical stores or how do you see that in going forward? Yes, that is a, absolutely a very, very interesting question. And uh, there are there are discussions that uh, brick and mortar will uh, will lose in the, uh, to e-commerce in the, in the future. And we've definitely seen that in some retail uh, uh, sectors. But I believe that uh, uh, the the store will have a very important uh, function in the future. Uh, it's the first way the the products we have uh, are um, they're voluminous. They need a lot of uh, space, and and the stores are very important for us. Inspirational. Uh, that is where the customers get to to see the products. They can touch them. And they can see how they uh, they can use them to to improve their their home, and also uh, connect with the employees. We know that our customers they also have a lot of questions uh, at the same time. They want advice, and the combination of showing the products and uh, uh, competent and knowledgeable uh, employees. Uh, makes it necessary to, to have the stores also in the future. So I don't think it's uh, either or, but we will have a combination and, and uh, e-commerce is also a very important uh, channel to, to connect with the, uh, with the customers at an early stage where they start to investigate about the products and price, etc. And, uh, and they end up uh, visiting the store or as we see, uh, Seventy percent, I think, of of, uh, of our e-commerce are click and collect. So they they sit at home and they buy, and then mm -hmm. they go to the store and maybe also buy other products. So the store is important, and we will continue to develop the stores in the future. And uh, and I'm sure that uh, we will see stores that are more and more also uh, serves as. Uh, as a showrooms and to uh, to give inspiration to the to the customer. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, Carlotto, I've been very pleasantly surprised how, how our board members, our president, Sergio Giroldi from Obi, he's very optimistic about the stores going forward in the future. And generally speaking, all the people that I've interviewed, and in this is the, the fifth interview, have all been very optimistic about the physical stores in the future, but also the very need to also have the, the online business, but to use the stores as fulfillment centers. You know, my wife gets sick and tired of, of, of a delivery coming. She doesn't know when it's going to come. Is she going to stay in? She's got to stay in. She's tired. Whereas a store, you can just go and visit, click and collect, pick it up, take it away. You don't even have to even see anybody hardly. You, you ring up, you pay, or you do it on the computer, you collect it. Uh, and this is seen going forward has been a very, very positive aspect. Yeah. So let me just, uh, it's a family owned business. I was the CEO of a family owned business for 17 years, as you know. Uh, and the very strong identity of the people working for a family business is amazing. I found it amazing. I never found that when I was working for these big conglomerates like the Home Depot. The people were on fire, they were enthusiastic, but this, this we feeling in a family business and people have been there years and years. Is that the case with Maxpo too, or with uh, your company? Well, I hope that if you if you talk to the, uh, my colleagues, uh, this is what they they would say about the company, and uh, and we want to to be perceived as a as a big family uh, mm -hmm. where we cooperate closely and we worry about each other and uh, we help each other and. Uh, we want our employees also to have a long career uh, uh, and, and associate their uh, values with our value system uh, um, and, and in that respect uh, develop uh, have a culture that might be different from companies that have a different ownership. Yeah, but talking about values, I know you're very, very strong on corporate social responsibility, on climate change, on the environment. Uh, probably this is your background in forestry and everything, but I know you're very dedicated about this. Would you like to say a few words about your, what you were doing at, uh, at your company for this? Well, we, as, uh, as uh, most companies these days, we, uh, we have high ambitions and we want to perceive as a as a serious partner to the society that uh, where we also do our share of what is necessary to reach the, the goals of, uh, to, to reduce uh, emissions and, uh, and uh, improve the, the, the quality of life and also the, the climate uh, uh, around us. So we have our own uh, um, environmental strategy and and we were, were dedicated that we will work hard to reduce our carbon footprint by using uh, taking all different measures regarding energy use and how we how we distribute our products uh, etc and I'm sure that we will be able to do that over time mm -hmm. uh, as also the rest of the society and we are very conscious of what uh, what materials are we are we uh, uh, using? Uh, how to avoid uh, waste, etc. And uh, we also uh, uh, we also as a supplier to the building industry, we uh, we face very demanding customers uh, because a modern house when it's built, it should be very energy efficient and. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we are talking about uh, using recycled building materials. And as a middleman, we also have to give be a very clear in our uh, demands and uh, requirements to the suppliers so we can deliver products that has a high uh, climate uh, profile, if you should say that. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so the co collaboration also with the industry is very, very important because they they are one of the, the key elements that we have to, to, to work with to succeed. When I think of Norway, I think of a lot of water and a lot of forests. Do you, are you having a problem with your forest that we're having here in Germany about 
uh, the the tree is dying and things. Is that a big problem in Norway or or not such a problem? Well, unfortunately, we are, we are uh, been following this very 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 closely, and it's uh, it's very very scary of what we have seen in in Central Europe during the last years, where all the forests are dying with the uh, beagles coming in and and destroying the. And is that the question? Uh, a result of the of the climate change of, of uh, higher temperatures. Uh, nobody really knows, but uh, we follow this very very closely and, and do whatever we can to to keep our forests both uh, both safe and in 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 a, in a, and sound, so they are uh, resistant when this. This is also a kind of a pandemic that. Uh, that uh, threatens the nature, but in a different way. In a different way, indeed. Yeah, Carlotta, we've got some questions from people who are following this webinar this uh, today. Um, do you plan to open new stores? This comes from uh, Eric Moray, senior manager of Schneider Electric. Do you plan to open new Maxbo stores? Oh yes, we have definitely. Uh, there we have plans to open. Uh, Three new stores uh, in the in the coming 12, uh, 12 months, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that will be in different places in, in Norway uh, of fairly fairly good size. That will uh, uh, with our ambition that they will uh, be very attractive for for the consumer. Where we are able to 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 uh, to give the the consumer, the inspiration, and also efficient uh, distribution, and also energy efficient uh, stores that are built with all the new technology that is uh, available. So we want we want to expand, but we, uh, uh, and uh, we want to expand into to parts of Norway where we are not established uh, yet, but we are basically a, a domestic company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still remember my visit to that beautiful store that you have there with a lot of glass and the way it was and, uh, and talking about the energy serving and everything else. Um, Ken Hughes, who was the, this Irishman who, who moderates some of our uh, very, very good webinars has uh, got a question. He was also a speaker at, at our conference. If you reflect back over the last 10 years of all the business you have run, what are the biggest mistakes you think you have made or indeed are we making as a, uh, or indeed, what are we making as a society? Oh, that's also a very difficult question. Oh, what, very what deep is question. Biggest, yeah. What is the biggest mistake I, I've done? And I, uh, I hard, it's very hard to tell. And uh, it's very good. And, uh, and I, I also think that, uh, that it's not very valuable also to, to look backwards, I want to have my 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 views uh, uh, to into the into the future. Um, but one of the the, the old, always the the difficult the, the questions when you're owning a company is uh, uh, you have always to to have a realistic. Uh, uh, relation to, 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 to the risk, uh, how, how aggressive can you be? And I want to have to this company to be safe and also prepared for the future. And that's all, always a, a balance. How much risk are you willing to take? And uh, to, uh, to, to invest for the, for the future. And that is always a, a, a difficult, uh, decision. We want to keep private, remain private, mm -hmm. and yeah. at the same time we also want to to invest aggressively for the future. Because privately you can always think long term. I, I've worked for very big corp. I worked for the Home Depot and I worked for the biggest corporation in, uh, in Germany and I've also worked for family business. Uh, and of course in the family business it's uh, you can think long term, you don't have to answer anybody, um, you don't have to publish your figures. So it's a very, very nice situation and a very comfortable situation for everybody working in the firm, uh, rather than the hectic that sometimes comes in a, in a larger company. 
so I've now got a, a, a question from Terry Coleman. Do you know Terry in Belgium? Yes. It's his birthday today, so I sent him a message this morning. Oh, yeah. Uh, his birthday. Is, and he's current, he always has, has asked some interesting questions. He said, in which regards has Ma Maxbo experienced the business model to integrate B2B with B2C in its store development? How do you analyze the potential to join both the universes of DIY store and the pro store for the trading? How do you analyze the potential to join? Yeah, you're, you've got professional stores and you've got the Maxwell stores, yeah. Yes, and, and that is always a, 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 a dilemma because there, there might be a conflict in interests. Uh, but in general, we have over time learned that we can develop uh, very nice stores that uh, are attractive to the consumer but also the way we treat our professional customers, the small uh, the carpenters, etc., that come to the stores, they have their own entrance, they have their office, their salespeople that they can meet. And they always uh, normally also come at different times of the day. We open some of the stores at six o'clock in the morning and they're able to go there before they go to the, the, the sites. And then we have the private consumers during the day and, and the, the professionals come back at, at, at night again. And then we have combined this by having the logistics system. So when we uh, deliver uh, building materials and paint and everything to the, to, to the construction site, that is done from uh, dedicated uh, logistics centers. So the combination of the stores and efficient logistics has been the key focus for us to, to manage to handle both uh, customer categories uh, during under the same roof. Yes, there is no dominant player in the Norwegian market. And uh, I think you're one of about eight or 10 ch chains that are all doing very, very well in Norway. What is your USP? What is your unique selling point? What is why would I come to a Maxpo store than going to somewhere else from your point of view? Well, first of all, I believe that we have a strong brand. Everyone knows Maxpo. Uh, and uh, is, uh, is in that case well, well known. And we have good locations. Location is always uh, very important. Uh, we have very central locations, uh, easy access for the, uh, for the consumer. Uh, and they are of... Uh, in, in general, compared to our customers, the uh, competitors, there are uh, the big stores, wide uh, variety of, uh, of products. And uh, compared to some other uh, place in the industry, we are not the low price uh, uh, mm -hmm. and low service uh, provider. We want also to be known for having uh, well experienced people that are able to provide excellent service and, uh, and because that is so important in, in our industry and it's important that uh, to create, to be sure that you have repeat customers that they come back. So uh, the size of the stores, the brand and the, the, the service level is uh, what we uh, are focusing on to to be attractive to the consumer. Yes. In our membership, we've got 215 members, as I said earlier on, but there are many companies, there are only small, medium-sized companies like yourself, and all doing very, very well by offering quality, by offering service, by 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 being by having a very good brand. So it, it's very, very nice to see how, how well Maxpo is doing. Rainer Sternard, who we all know from the Dana, uh, he is the editor of the... Uh, of the Dana uh, DIY uh, International. Do you develop new store concepts, particularly reach better the urban target groups, smaller proximity stores? Do you? De well, not actually. We have not been focusing on 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 the on the on the on the people living in the in the in the city centres and and 
that is basically because uh, in Norway you don't have the big uh, the big cities. Uh, most people live actually outside the cities and uh, where they have easy access to both the car the uh, and and and, uh, and this, to, to reach the, the stores that are not based in the city centers, but uh, normally a little bit outside. So uh, uh, they are in Norway, we have a particular case now where they're trying to, to, to close Oslo, that they're not supposed to, to have cars there at all within a, in a few years. So people really? are using yeah. the car. The people with cars will live outside Oslo and and most people living inside Oslo are the people working there and, uh, mm -hmm. and leaving the city. So uh, if we believe in, uh, in the concept of, of stores that you can uh, reach by car. Mm -hmm. Carlotto, we have known each other since 2004. The, the Ed was founded in 2002. You became a member in, I think, at the end of 2004. Um, and you've been on the board all this time, and we've developed over the years to become quite a large organization. Uh, we've been very, very thankful for your input and for your, for your wisdom and for your judgment on, on many issues. So what is, what's this brought you as far as the, uh, how do you see EDRA Gin today? Mm. Uh, first of all, I think it's a, EDRA, it's a, it's a unique organization, uh, and it's been a, uh, uh, a great privilege, John, to uh, work together with you and having the, the opportunity to be on the board. And uh, it has given me so much uh, pleasure and inspiration and also given me the opportunity to make friends uh, all over the world. And, uh, and I think that today it's a unique organization that you probably want, don't find in, in many industries. Uh, where you, during all these years, John, mm -hmm. have been able to develop a true global organization and, uh, that really connects uh, everyone. It's a great networking arena and it's an arena for, uh, for inspiration and also good personal relationships. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, I think that Edra is, uh, I would say, is the is the UN of the DIY industry. And mm -hmm. uh, you can be very, very proud of what you have, uh, have developed. And I, I have great pressure. And uh, I have been able to uh, connect with colleagues uh, all over Europe and in South America and in Australia. And we have been to tours uh, in Japan together. Japan, and and all of this makes... Uh, being in this uh, great family, Edra family and Jin family, uh, uh, a great value. Yeah, what, I, what has amazed me over these many years is how well people receive each other. You, you, you came with us when we went to Japan and we saw these wonderful Japanese stores and the, the hospitality of the Japanese people and the, what you learned. This was quite remarkable that how people can share their experiences and, and to see the friendship between, you know, Japan. Do you remember the tour? That was a wonderful tour we went on, of course. Yeah. Yes, and it's very, very much based on, on mutual trust. And uh, you're not... Uh, when we look outside the borders, most of us we are not uh, we are not uh, competitors. We are colleagues, and uh, we Indeed. all struggle with the same. And uh, I'm very very uh, pleased with all the the, uh, the willingness to share experience and uh, and and information about uh, how how they operate in the different countries. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, that almost concludes our talk today. Uh, let's only hope that we can go ahead with the Global DOI Summit. Everything is in a turmoil at the moment. Let's only hope the, the situation improves. But Carlotta, it's been a, a huge pleasure for me to know you all these years, for you to be part of our organization and to see the way it develops. And uh, um, so probably I should give you the last word to see. And you, you're optimistic about the future within our industry, are you, the, the home improvement industry going forward? Uh, yes, I'm optimistic. Uh, I'm a born optimist and we have to be that in, uh, uh, 
to to survive but i'm very optimistic for the diy industry that we will have a very prosperous uh, future uh, mm-hmm. and uh, there's so much to be done and we are in an industry that there is still room for a lot of development new technology and uh, and new uh, new groups and new young people are coming in and have different demands but we will be able to to handle that and and uh, i'm sure that both in in norway and the rest of the world it will be interesting times that we have ahead of us i'm looking forward to that well carl otto it's been a, a huge pleasure i said to to interview you today uh, my next interview partner is also a colleague of a board member which hero massa to sushi who is the the owner and the ceo of kinds the leading the number one home improvement company in japan which we're going to do in three weeks time uh, and so we're continuing with our distinguished guests in these interviews which uh, is always very enlightening thank you very much i wish you uh, continued success and uh, Uh, I hope that you will stay with us a long time before the next generation and I'm sure it'll continue. So thank you very much indeed and uh, I wish you well and I look forward to meeting you physically again yeah. whenever that may be. That might that thank you very much and I hope that we will meet again very 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 soon. Yeah, thank by you. then have I may nice have time. had a haircut. Yeah. Okay, thank you. thank you very much indeed. Okay, Carlotta, thank you very bye much bye. indeed. Bye-bye.